The Babe led the Bombers to their first world championship in 1923. Great play! A no-hitter! Perfect game for John Larson! Kirk, he catches it! It's third! Home run of the game! Hayes makes the catch! The Yankees win! The Yankees are back on top! World champions for the 27th time! In 1926, the Yankees had lost in seven games to the St. Louis Cardinals. So they were a great team. They had appeared in the World Series four times in the decade and won only once. And many people think the 1927 Yankees were the greatest team of all time. What's interesting is that the 27 team, apart from Lazeri, was pretty much the same as the 26 team. The year before the New York Yankees, had won 91 to lead the American League and go into the World Series. This year, they won 110, breaking the old record previously held by the 1912 Boston Red Sox of 105 wins. So this was truly uh, an incredible team, a record-setting team in virtually every category. The 1927 New York Yankees absolutely dominated the American League and Major League Baseball. As a team, they ranked first in the AL in various statistical categories, including hits, home runs, batting average, and ERA. The Bronx Bombers won a record 110 games in 1927, large in part because of their manager, Miller Huggins. Miller Huggins, who was a little feisty second baseman, largely for the Cardinals in the first decade of the century, seemed to be no match for the boisterous crew that he had to handle, particularly Babe Ruth. Because he got Jacob Rupert's backing in an ultimate dispute, in an ultimate test of power and authority, he was able to bring Ruth to his knees and whip the Yankees into a machine that uh, no one in the American League had seen anything like to that point. The amazing thing about that team was that nobody was a gimme on the 1927 New York Yankees. They were an incredible team and always will rank among the very best teams in the history of the game. The 1927 New York Yankees was one of the most powerful and most successful teams in baseball history. You had your murderer's row of Ruth, Garrick, Lazeri, Coombs, and Musel. And these guys were a terror. When you say murderer's row, we hear the term all the time, but what does it mean? Well, it means Babe Ruth hitting 60 home runs, which is more than any other team in the American League. It's Lou Gehrig, who the year before hit only 16 home runs and now hits 47 home runs. Lou Gehrig, hitting behind Babe Ruth, hits 175, that's 175 RBIs. How can that possibly be? It's because everybody else on the team got on base all the time. The Yankees' offense in 1927 was a spectacle never before witnessed on the diamond. Three sluggers hit over 350. Lou Gehrig swatted 52 doubles while Earl Combs registered 231 hits, both franchise records at the time. Babe Ruth's 60 home runs and Lou Gehrig's 175 RBI were major league records, while Combs notched 23 triples, which still ranks as the most in Yankees history. Sometimes overlooked, and it shouldn't be, was the New York Yankees pitching staff, which was terrific. They had four pitchers that won 18 or more games, including Wade Hoyt, who picked up 22 wins. They were tremendous. The team ERA was great. They just simply refused to allow teams to score. The pitching staff boasted the top four American League leaders in winning percentage, while Wade Hoyt and Will Moore held the top two spots in ERA among all major league pitchers. With dominant numbers like these, the Yankees easily found themselves atop the AL and playing for their second World Series championship. In 1927, the New York Yankees faced the Pittsburgh Pirates for the World Series. They just annihilated the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it was not so much a display of batting proficiency, the five o'clock lightning that had made them famous for dominating the American League. It was the underrated pitching. This is a story with the Yankees in the World Series time after time, that they get to the World Series primarily with their hitting, and then when you're facing a really terrific team, the best the National League has to offer, your pitchers have to display their prowess. 
They took their power hitting to Pittsburgh for Game 1 of the 1927 World Series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And according to legend, the Yankees won the World Series even before the World Series began. In a batting practice session prior to Game 1, Ruth and Gehrig pounded one ball after another into the outfield seats at Pittsburgh's Forbes Field, a place where very few hitters in the National League were able to reach. Prompting Babe Ruth to say, hey sonnies, if you go out there in the bleachers and get a few baseballs, bring them back here, I'll sign them for you. The Pirates, however, were not beaten during a batting practice session. They were simply overwhelmed during the four-game World Series. In the very first game, the Pirates came out charged and played very, very well. They gave up only two earned runs and would have won the game had it not been for their defense, which gave up three unearned runs, and the Yankees came away winning that first game 5-4. to four. Wait Hoyt started in one game one for the Yankees, pitching seven and a third innings while giving up four runs. Babe Ruth went three for four and scored twice. The Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig, added a triple and two RBI. But the big story of game one was the crucial fielding errors by the Pittsburgh Pirates that allowed the Yanks to score three unearned runs and take a one to nothing series lead. Game two, also at Forbes Field, saw the Yankees' bats come alive. Mark Koenig, Tony Lazari, and Bob Musel combined for seven hits, while George Pipgrass pitched nine strong, allowing just two runs. As New York downed Pittsburgh 6-2, they took a 2-0 series lead and proved the Pirates' home field advantage meaningless. When the teams returned to New York for Game 3, the Yankees slated their ace left-hander Herb Pennock to start. Pennock was a curveball specialist who often had trouble with his elbow late in the season due to throwing so many curveballs, but this day he was absolutely masterful. Herb Pennock actually pitched seven perfect innings. And only with one out in the eighth inning did Pirates third baseman Pye Trainer record a base hit off Herb Pennock. Pennock ended up allowing only one run and three hits as the Yankees went up three games to nothing. While Herb Pennock was the star of game three, the Yankees sluggers tormented the Pirates pitching. Babe Ruth hit the first home run of the 1927 Fall Classic, while Lou Gehrig went two for three with a double, a triple, and two RBI. Earl Coombs and Mark Koenig also added two hits and two runs apiece as the Yankee Stadium crowd of over 60,000 saw their team take a commanding 3 to nothing series lead. The final game was very close. Uh, and probably the most exciting of all of the games. The Yankees and Pirates were tied at three after seven innings, and then going into the ninth inning, it was time for just a little bit of Yankee Stadium magic. The Yankees loaded the bases with nobody out. Pirates pitcher John Milgis ended up striking out both Lou Gehrig and Bob Musel. However, Milgis then uncorked his second wild pitch of the game, Yankees center fielder Earl Coombs came in to score from third base, so the 1927 World Series really ended with more of a whimper than a bang. As the Yankees ended up sweeping the Pittsburgh Pirates, the very first time that an American League team had swept a World Series. Game four did indeed complete the sweep. Ruth hit his second home run of the World Series and added three RBI. Earl Coombs crossed the plate three times, while Mark Koenig and catcher Pat Collins each recorded three hits. Will Seymour, a relief pitcher for much of the season, notched the victory by pitching a complete game and allowing just one earned run. In the 1927 World Series, Babe Ruth hit the series only two home runs and drove in seven runs, while his teammate Lou Gehrig had two doubles and two triples. One of the unsung heroes of the series was shortstop Mark Koenig, who in 18 at-bats recorded nine hits for an even 500 batting average. In addition, Earl Combs led the Bombers' offense with six runs scored. Will Seymour had a win and a save while pitching to an ERA of under one. Pennock and Pipgrass were also brilliant, helping propel the Yankees to a 4-0 sweep over the Pirates and their second World Series championship. While 1927 was an incredible season for the Yankees, it was only the beginning, as it left the franchise wanting more. Their batting performance in 27 doesn't approach what you would see the following year in 28. 